Welcoming viewers here in the United States and around the world. Breaking news here of the shooting at Fort Lauderdale International Airport down there in Florida. This has uh, happened near the baggage claim area. We can tell you that multiple people, multiple, have been killed. That's coming directly to us from the sheriff's office. Uh, we are also being told that there was one shooter, and that one shooter is now in custody. We've been looking at a lot of pictures trying to make sense of this here. Uh, here you're seeing what looks maybe uh, to be a, a piece of the airport. We've seen passengers out on the tarmac lining up. You see an ambulance there. We know that they have been evacuated from the terminal. Uh, it's specifically Terminal 2. They are now uh, being placed on buses to move away from what has been dubbed a, a crime scene. One passenger who was getting off a plane said he saw people running and screaming. All services at the airport have now been suspended. Airport is shut down for the unforeseeable future. So as we all walk through this this afternoon, as this is an ongoing situation, let's begin the hour with Renee Marsh. She is our CNN aviation correspondent. Renee, what do you know? All right, well, Brooke, you know, we are, as you reported, multiple people are dead here at this airport, uh, Fort Lauderdale International Airport. And uh, we do know as a result of all that's been going on, obviously operations are shut down there. Uh, the FAA has just put out information that there are significant delays. Uh, services are suspended as uh, multiple law enforcement agencies descend on this airport uh, for this investigation, which is now obviously a criminal investigation. We know the FBI is in contact uh, with uh, local authorities there. Uh, we also know ATF is on its way uh, to this uh, site as well. Uh, but the lead here is going to be the local authorities, Broward County uh, authorities, and they are releasing information again uh, that multiple uh, people are dead. There are also several injuries. We know this happened in the baggage claim area of the airport. So uh, in a non secure area, uh, not near the TSA checkpoint. Uh, it happened in the baggage claim area, Terminal 2, uh, and, and usually this is where Delta Airlines operates out of. Uh, what we still don't know at this hour, Brooke, is why. Uh, why did this individual open fire inside of this airport? Uh, was this individual targeting anyone in particular? Who are the victims here? Uh, all of those things we just simply don't know at this hour. Uh, but with this a large police presence, that is the top priority for them, Brooke. Okay, um, uh, Renee, stand by. Juliet Kayam, let me bring you in, former Homeland Security uh, official. Uh, you know, when you see all these different people, whether it's, it, I couldn't quite even tell if they were coming off a plane or being taken around a terminal outside of the airport, but uh, priority, obviously, safety of these uh, passengers yeah. and airport personnel. Beyond that, what are they doing right now? Okay, so there's going to be uh, essentially a well-orchestrated plan for an active shooter case at any major airport, as your reporter was saying. Uh, the baggage claim area is the most vulnerable. I would suspect that those people that are out on the tarmac came from the, uh, from the main terminal, and uh, essentially they were just told to evacuate and sort of break all protocols. All air traffic will be stopped now, obviously, um, at Fort Lauderdale. Um, and uh, right now, they are uh, obviously assisting the, uh, the victims and ins ensuring that the first responders can help those in immediate need. And, of course, the investigation is ongoing. I hate to say this, but, uh, you know, these things are um, anticipated by uh, airport personnel, airport law enforcement, state and local. And so th this is you're seeing the plan unfold. This is ac actually how it should be working. You just want to get the passengers out of the active shooter uh, situation. Yeah, and by the way, as I was listening to you, I just got some information from Department of Homeland Security that we can now report at least three people have been killed. Three have been killed. Yeah. To reiterate, this was in baggage claim. The motive is still unknown, and I want to loop back with you because obviously, you know, you think about everything we go through to get on a plane these days, but you can walk right. in baggage claim with just about anything. Stand by, Juliet, on that point because we have Boris Sanchez, who is now on the scene at Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Boris, you tell me what you're seeing. Boris, it's Brooke. You're live on CNN. Can, can you hear me? Hey, Brooke. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we actually are just crossing a line of Broward, uh, Broward County Sheriff's officers 
and have a very uh, large armored vehicle in front of us. Uh, there's a, a heavy, heavy police presence here, as you can imagine. There's also uh, several dozen, it appears there's about, about a dozen buses off to our left. Uh, I've seen several of them uh, piling in. It appears that there's going to uh, be a, an evacuation here of folks that were inside the airport. The traffic outside is uh, it's essentially jammed. There's almost no way in the airport. Uh, our photographers are on the other side trying to get in. Uh, as you said, Brooke, uh, it, it is a mess here. Uh, multiple casualties. Uh, officials believe there, there was one shooter. That person is believed to be in custody. Obviously, uh, this investigation is going to be a massive one. Uh, I, I'm seeing people that are loading cars and they're being allowed to leave, it appears like. But you have to imagine that inside uh, that baggage claim area, uh, there's going to be a, a serious screening of everyone that was inside. Uh, the ATF, as we heard, is on the way to the scene right now. I am seeing a very large presence of Broward County uh, Sheriff's officers. Uh, the entire airport has been shut down. I will note that I just saw a flight leaving, so it appears they're probably trying to clear the tarmac. Uh, but other than that, uh, no real movement is coming into the airport other than uh, media and a few cars that are being uh, let out of the loop here at Fort Lauderdale Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, we first got word of this at about uh, 1 o'clock today that there was uh, shots. There were shots fired uh, at the Delta Terminal, Terminal 2 here uh, at the airport. And just outside, we're literally parking right now just outside Terminal 2. And I see a uh, couple dozen people standing outside. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what's, what's happening here, but there are several people uh, several dozen people outside of the terminal. It appears that they're speaking with law enforcement right now. We're actually being asked to, to move out of the way. Again, uh, a very large police presence, uh, a, a very, very uh, disorganized scene, at least from what we've seen so far in terms of people uh, moving bags around everywhere. But it does appear that officials are uh, locking down Terminal 2 uh, and trying to get people out with those buses that I mentioned before, Brooke. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on and alert you as soon as I get some new information. I'll let, you, I'll let you go, Boris, but do me a favor and let's figure out 100% where the shooting happened. We had in baggage claim, you just said in Terminal 2. Let's, let's figure that out uh, and, and we'll, we'll get you back on the phone as soon as we know that definitively. I still have Juliet Kayam and uh, Juliet, I mean, noticed uh, yeah. to, to Boris's point, a plane just took off. So maybe, in a sense, they're trying to clear huh. some of those planes out of there. I'm also looking at live pictures on the highway around this airport. And it, it looks like you know it's jammed. Maybe uh, right. police are stopping some folks from coming or going in some of those lanes. Uh, what more? What What are some of the questions you have? Okay, so uh, and this uh, the fact that the planes are going or trying to get out of the way would be normal. Look, I know this sounds really weird, but you can't close a major metropolitan air airport for too long. It in, uh, the way that the protocols work is, you know, you try to minimize the risk as much as possible, but you got to make sure that the planes are still flying. So people shouldn't be surprised if they see planes coming and co uh, going. Um, the the changes in where this happened, and even I would say the casualty reports. Um, are, are might change over time. That's the nature of breaking news. Well, Brooklyn by the way, I, I let me just jump in and, and interject. Uh, speaking of, sadly, we now have the number up to five. This is according to a member yeah. of law enforcement this, to, to Evan Perez, five dead. Go ahead, yeah, Julia. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, this is, we always get, the number's always lower in the first hour. It's going to, it may get higher. Uh, this is a mass casualty event, obviously. Um, and so um, now the investigation begins. The, um, earlier on, there was a question about who is in charge. Unless they actually know who it is, one is going to assume that they're going to begin this also as a federal or an FBI investigation, um, uh, unless there's a suspect and they know that it was something related to a domestic matter. I wouldn't make that any judgment right now. Yeah, I don't think we, we know that yet. I think this is Broward, Broward County jurisdiction, and here we go. I think I'm looking at another plane about to take off here. Broward County yeah. jurisdiction, Fort Lauderdale assisting. We know ATF, FBI uh, helping right. out as well. And depending on the motivation, to your point, it could be it could be a federal federal situation. Beyond that. Um, uh, you know, I heard the, the, the mayor on with Wolf a bit ago saying the airport was shut down. To your point, yes, they're trying. This is a major airport. They're trying to clear some planes out. You see on the tarmac, five planes there waiting in line. Uh, what, what, what's happening within the airport? Because I understand some people are still stuck in there. Yeah, so they're going to just essentially do a very slow roll evacuation. And the reason why is they want to make sure that there's no one uh, culpable or, or, or anyone who may be guilty amongst 
uh, those who look like, you know, sort of terrified passengers or terrified airport visitors today. Uh, so they may take their time on the evacuation. So people in the airport who are watching, you know, just this is a time we ask people to be patient uh, regarding this um, uh, this will be uh, uh, an investigation that will have a, a number of tentacles, and right now those are beginning. That's going to include uh, uh, surveillance of uh, what or who was approaching the airport, um, surveillance from days back about whether any uh, uh, there was any evidence of, of um, uh, stakeouts or views or whatever else uh, may have occurred, and then um, and then just a determination of, of the of the who, what, where, and why. Uh, the most important thing is to obviously protect those who are so obviously scared and traumatized right now, uh, but that could take a while. Airports are like many cities, and there's a lot of things going on that then now have to be paced appropriately to ensure that uh, you don't lose evidence, that you don't lose uh, a potential uh, criminal, um, and uh, and so... Uh, you know, that is that that's what this looks like to me, having been very involved uh, with uh, planning and security for airports um, uh, uh, throughout my career. Uh, and that's what this looks like to me. And we'll just wait for the yeah. specific facts about what's going on. I'll say one other quick thing. Um, yeah. We had talked about this before, Brooke, and this is the the, the nature of transitions um, uh, that that threats do not uh, take a transition hi uh, hiatus. And so. One of the major uh, challenges, you know, is just simply that the homeland is under ongoing threat. And you see why the threat increase, you know, why we've been talking about this threat increase, uh, uh, depending on what this is for the last couple of weeks. I know you and I talked about it around the holidays uh, was because, um, you know, the, 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 the threat does not does not take a political break. Right. No, it doesn't. And, you know, I hate to look at these pictures of these innocent individuals being wheeled in on stretchers yeah. to this uh, to this hospital. Um, Juliet, stay with me. Uh, I will. Uh, do we have Art or do we have Renee, guys? All right, let me bring in Art Roderick, our CNN law enforcement analyst, um, who, who's a new voice on all of this. And, and Art, I was just handed a diagram of where this uh, shooting apparently happened, somewhere around the, the arrival section of Terminal 2. This is downstairs baggage claim, which in, by no means Sorry. am I connecting the two, but I was in Istanbul. Uh, a day after that attack, and it is precisely yeah. in the same sort of area. I mean, I remember seeing the shattered glass right near baggage claim when people can come and go, right. and that looks to me where, uh, right around where this happened. Yeah, Brooke, that's an excellent comparison because what you've got here is a soft target. I mean, you can only, you can only security so far. There's always going to be a soft underbelly somewhere. And in this particular case, as we all know, anybody that travels – uh, anywhere in the U.S. I mean, that is a, an area that is completely unsecure, um, and it, it, it is a soft target. Now, when I first heard about this, the first thing that came to mind is possibly a domestic, but then when you've got nine people initially, the reports were nine people shot. I think I've seen reports upwards of five people have been uh, uh, killed. Um, it's five yeah, dead, the by the way, Art. We've just got an update. Five yeah. dead and eight injured being taken to the hospital. Yeah. Please continue. They've, they've, got to, they've got to get to the motive really quick on this because if, if this is just, if this is uh, anywhere related to terrorism, then we've got, obviously, alerts have to go out to all the airports around the country. And then, of course, we're back in the, the same loop. Is he inspired? Is he directed? Um, or is this just a psychopath with a handgun or a rifle? Um, so that motive, the motive is the key at this point in time to get to that as quick as we can. We don't know yet. Um, Art, stay with me. Evan Perez is our justice correspondent to help us begin to connect some of the dots. Evan, what are you learning? Well, Brooke, at this point, uh, the, the question of whether or not it's, it's, it's terrorism or not, that's at the, at the top of everybody's minds right now. We're, to we're told that the officials there have not found any indications of terrorism. I think some of the witness accounts so far have not indicated the, the, the shooter said anything, uh, made any kinds of statements. So that's usually one of the first things you hear. In this case, we haven't heard any of that yet. And